What's going on guys? It is that time of year again. We are preparing for Colorado 2023. I'm going to go through my gear list today, um, show you what I'm bringing, what I'm wearing, and all that good stuff. So we're just going to jump right in with clothes. Uh, I'm going to work inside to out, so stuff that's on my body, nearest to my body, and then the outer layers, and then what I have in my pack. So. Um, footwear, I'm wearing Merrill Moab 2 um, mid-rise boots. I don't have those with me. That's what's going to be on my feet. Um, they worked fine last year. They're not a mountain boot, but they're what I have. So I'm just going to go with those again. And as far as socks go, I have uh, Darn Tough Merino wool hiker socks. These are lightweight. Um, I don't really need a midweight or a heavyweight. Your feet get pretty hot when you're hiking around. So I found that's what works good for um, September hunts. So I got those Darn Tough socks. This year, new addition, which is absolutely essential in my opinion, is gaiters. So I went out and I bought the Outdoor Research Crocodile Gator. These are, um, they come up to right below my knee and they're Gore-Tex. So hopefully these will keep my feet and my legs dry in that uh, early morning dew on the grass. If we get rain, this will help aid my rain pants in shedding that. Or just going over um, trees, getting sticks in your boot, uh, going through creeks. If you take a little splash, you know, I can get your foot out real quick. Might help shed some water, but I got those to run on top of my boots. It's Crocodile Gators from Outdoor Research. Pants, same exact pants. A lot of the stuff's gonna be the same. If it works, don't change it. So I have the Wrangler Stretch cargo pants. These are just brown color, super comfortable, super flexible. I liked those a lot last year. And then also something new for this year is and my shirt I wore, it's like a Gander Mountain or a Browning hunting shirt, but it had um, mesh on the sides to vent. And I found that that rubbed my skin raw, kind of under my pack. So I went out and got a Killick um, cooling long sleeve shirt. This is like a, a base layer. It's meant for moisture wicking um, and you can wear it under your clothes or you can wear it when it gets warm in the midday when you're exerting yourself and it'll keep you dry. Uh, it's got a little, I think UPF 40 for sun. It's antimicrobial, so hopefully I don't stink as bad. Um, and then it's got their Summit camo pattern, which matches my other Killick gear. So on top of that base layer shirt, I have my mid-weight puffy jacket. This is a Primal Loft. Um, jacket also from Killick. This thing is really nice. Um, it's honestly super comfy, it's super lightweight, um, packs down small when I stuff it in my pack when I get going during the day. It's got a nice hood and cinches around the bottom and it just fits good. I like it. It's comforting to have out there in the woods. As far as rain gear goes, um, on the top half I have my Killick um, Axiom rain jacket. All of this is the same pattern uh, just because it's easy and Killick's a pretty <laughs> cheap brand. It worked well so I like their stuff. Um, but this thing's heavy duty. I put this on over my jacket in the mornings when it's extra cold and I haven't kind of warmed up yet. This gives you an extra layer of uh, sort of trapping air as insulation and it also blocks wind. Um, so I put that on in the mornings or if it's raining. And rain pants. Um, I went the cheap route. These are not Alaskan certified rain pants. These are the Frog Togs um, Ultra Light Rain Suit Pants. So I just bought one of those like $19 rain suits from Walmart. They're somewhere between disposable and reusable. So they're a breathable material. They're kind of soft, but they are waterproof. Um, I got the mediums and they are a little wide in the leg, but I'll have those gaiters on my bottom half to kind of cinch them down around my calves and my boots um, and the top half I'm not worried about. But these are just easy to throw on. I can throw these on over my pants and my boots if it starts raining. Um, and I'm not too concerned about getting like my thigh wet in my pants. So those are my rain pants I'm taking. Super light and they're, I don't know, two ounces maybe. but. Um, and extra clothes. So that's all the stuff I'm wearing on my body. And then I have extra clothes in my pack. This is if it gets cold at night, if I want some extra warming layers, or if I need extra things like socks. So I have an extra pair of those darn tough socks. Um, I will have an extra pair of synthetic underwear. I just didn't feel like putting underwear in my pack today. Um, and then I have a fleece beanie for the mornings or the nights because I use a quilt that doesn't have a hood. Keeps my head warm. And then I use a Polar Tech fleece, um, just a real light, another long sleeve. So if it gets cold at night, if it's in the mornings, we're making breakfast, sitting in glassing when we're kind of stable, standing still, um, I can put this on under my clothes, give me another warming layer. So that's all the clothes I'm taking to Colorado. All right, so 
Moving on to the pack, this is sort of what's on the exterior of everything. Obviously, I'm gonna dive in and show you guys the gear. I don't have my food in here. I don't have all these straps buckled, so looks a little uh, understuffed right now. But I'm using the same pack as last year. This is the Mystery Ranch Metcalf. This is in foliage green. I really like the layout, I like the price, and I liked how it fit. It was comfortable in the mountains, so I'm going with that again. Uh, on the belt of the pack, I still have the uh, FHF gear bear spray holster with my bear spray. There's just gonna be black bears in Colorado, but um, better to need it, better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So having that on the belt still. And then I'm also using the Walmart trekking poles. I took the ski baskets off. I realized I made that mistake last year. I don't really need them on there and they just got caught on some twigs and stuff. So using these two uh, just aluminum trekking poles from Outdoor Products once again. Diving into my pack, we have water. It's probably the most uh, frequently accessed thing on the trail. So I have the exact same water system as last year, except I'm gonna switch out these one liter smart water bottles for one and a half liters. Uh, I just haven't stopped at a gas station yet to get them, so I have these as stand-ins, but that'll give me three liters of water in my bottles instead of just two. So smart water bottles for my water carriage. And then I'm using the Sawyer squeeze system again. Uh, it really performed well last year. So I'm using the squeeze filter and the coupler for my filter bags. So I've got two two liter um, Canoc, Cenoc outdoors. These are the Vecto water bags. Um, so they've got that wide mouth, stretchy body, uh, and I hook, fill those up, hook them to the filter and squeeze them right into my bottles. Uh, I carry two to have one as a backup and then also to expand my storage capability. Where we're going in Colorado, we're not sure if we'll have as much access to water as we did in Montana. It looks like we will, but if we're doing big ascents and going to the top of a mountain, we know we're gonna be dry for a few hours or um, for an overnight. It's nice to have some bags to fill with water um, just to ensure I have enough to drink, I have enough to make breakfast, brush my teeth and stuff like that. So same water system, it's light, it's affordable and it works. All right, next we have the top lid of my pack. Um, and if you're an elk hunter, you can probably relate that this is kind of like the junk drawer of everything. This is stuff you want quick access to. This is small items. This is random bits and bobs that you don't want to put in the main body of your pack because they'll probably get lost. So this includes my uh, hygiene items, my first aid items, my electronics, and my miscellaneous stuff, my tools, if you will. So we'll start with tools. Um, using the Black Diamond Spot 350 headlamp again. Love this thing. I love the uh, different beam patterns, the spot beam, the flood beam, the red beam, um, the variable brightness. I have this loaded up with lithium batteries, so they handle um, cold a little bit wetter, in my opinion. Um, they protect you from like leaking a little bit better, but they are expensive. I opted for those in the headlamp, but then I have alkaline batteries as backup. So Black Diamond Spot headlamp and I'm running the Benchmade bug out again. Um, to be honest, I bought this with plans of EDCing it, but I have so many other knives, I haven't really, and this kind of just stayed in my pack. So this thing is relatively unused. It's the S30V version, super light, super thin, uh, and I like the drop point design. So hopefully, can put it to use this year, cleaning some game. So that's my knife. For electronics, I have my phone charger and my spare batteries. Keep these in a lock sack bag so they're um, protected from the elements. And if I need to charge my phone, I can slip it in here as well and keep it with the charger. That way if it rains, I have a place to kind of store everything. But I've got my battery bank, a three foot lightning cable, and then um, three double A's just attached to the back there so I don't lose them for the headlamp. But it's electronics. Next up. Arguably the most important thing in the pack is toilet paper. I am not messing around. I'm not playing any games, not taking any chances. I'm bringing a whole roll of toilet paper. Um, I've gotten it a little flatter, but I don't really care. I put it in a Ziploc bag um, and I'm rocking with it. You know, when you get out there and you start eating these, uh, these peak meals every night, it's a lot of carbs, it's a lot of cheese, um, eating these nuts, eating these mountain house breakfast meals and peanut butter and oatmeal, you know, you never know when uh, disaster may strike. So I'm prepared for it, I'm ready. I say bring it on. Also in hygiene and kept very separate from the toilet paper is my uh, toothbrush and toothpaste. I bought a toothbrush, I cut the handle completely off. I used to laugh at ultralight backpackers that did that, but really, all you really need on it, like you're not, you're not gripping a toothbrush like a toddler grips a crayon, you know? You're just kind of gripping it like that. I can get all the way to the back, I can get all around. So 
cut down toothbrush, uh, travel toothpaste. Pretty simple, don't overthink it. First aid kit, this is a big one for me. This is one I'm passionate about. It hasn't changed a lot, but I've also made this into sort of an emergency kit. So I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm using this Helicon Tex pouch. Um, and when you unzip it, my trauma stuff comes out just like that. I have a little ranger band around it, so it's a bundle. But this is my uh, gloves, my NAR uh, gloves, my, yeah, those are the gloves. These are the gauze. They're also NAR, <laughs> NAR gauze and then a SWAT T tourniquet. So I can use that as a pressure bandage. If I wrap, if I uh, put the gauze on, wrap the tourniquet around it, don't tighten it all the way down, or I can use it as a tourniquet. If I stretch that thing tight, I can use it to pack wounds. If I get a large gash, I can kind of wrap the gauze around it instead of using like a Band-Aid or something. So trauma components, they come right out and they're in one package, right? And stuff's not falling everywhere. I can toss this to Drake if I, I don't know, cut my, arm off and I get it out, I can hand it to him or something, but it's nice to have it in one package. Last time I just had it loose and that annoyed me a little bit. Um, and then this packet has two sides. Um, on one side, I have medical gear, um, boo-boo gear to be specific. So I have my Band-Aids, my triple antibiotic ointment, and all my meds, Tylenol PM, taking a page out of Drake's book and bringing some of that. Also bringing ibuprofen if I have to take it during the day and I have like swelling or inflammation, that helps a little more with that. I have Benadryl because I have allergies and I am weak and I have uh, Pepto-Bismol, but hopefully the toilet paper will counteract the need for that. So I got my meds and then I have my tape again, waterproof cushion tape. I only used a little bit of it, but I loved it last time, works good. Uh, and then I have Gorilla Tape for uh, gear repair. If I get a hole in my sleeping pad or in one of my water containers, I can kind of use that. So I have trauma, I have boo-boos, and then in my first aid kit on the other side, have that like emergency stuff. So I've got my uh, like rescue whistle um, for signaling purposes. If he gets lost again, maybe I can hand that off to him uh, and he can find camp a little easier. Uh, I have a Visipad and these are pretty neat. It's a flat chem light with a sticky backing. So if I need to mark something in the night or if I, uh, you can write on these things, you have a Sharpie. They're just kind of cool. I don't really need it, but I have one. So I thought I'd stick it in there. It's a backup light source. Um, and then I have the emergency kit. So this is a spark light fire starter with Baddest B fire fuses. If my lighter goes down or I lose it, I have a backup way of starting a fire with some tinder. Uh, I have 20 water purification tablets. If one of our filters goes down, I can use those. It's not a big deal. I don't really mind the taste. Uh, and then I have some Technora cord. So I'm not bringing a roll of 550 cord. I'm probably not going to hang my food, um, but it's still nice to have cordage in the backwoods, right? So I have some of that in there. Um, that's a pretty exhaustive list, but that is all of my miscellaneous items in that top lid of my pack. This is the system that gets me most excited in the mornings and somewhere around noon and also in the evenings. This is my cook system. Um, same as last year, basically, I deleted one item, which you'll see in a second. So I carry a spare fuel canister. Uh, I use the small ones so that they fit inside my pot. That way I can just grab it out and have everything ready to go. Um, I could use one of the slightly larger ones, but these are the 110 grams. Um, I haven't had a problem. I carry two because I'm probably going to be doing more boiling this time with coffee and such. So extra fuel canister. Guys, it happened. Remember last time I said I might bring two sporks because I'd probably lose one? I did. And then I bought another spork and it sucked because it wasn't long handled. So I got the same Sea to Summit long handled spork. I love it. I will never give it up. I should carry it around in my pocket every day just for nostalgia. But love these things. Another spork. Same Tokes pot, um, so I keep it in this orange stuff sack, and you'll notice once I open this up, I no longer have a microfiber towel. I had that for cleaning my pot, um, but I don't care it anymore for two reasons. Number one, I lost it. <laughs> um, number two, I figured out that this uh, stuff sack you can use as a pot scrubber. So if you're around water, like a creek or something, you can use this to kind of like clean things out. It's a mesh, um, so it dries really fast. Um, and they kind of meant it to be used for that. So not really a need to carry a microfiber towel. I didn't use it that much anyways. But I've got that to hold everything. I've got the pot lid, of course. Then I have my MSR Pocket Rocket 2 stove and a mini Bic lighter. Um, love mini Bics, they're perfect. If you're gonna buy a stove, 
don't get an MSR Pocket Rocket 2. Get the BRS Titanium Stove. It's lighter and it's cheaper. Um, I bought this when I first got into backpacking in a store without knowing any better or researching online. Uh, and it makes me sick to see how much they sell this thing for. Just buy a BRS stove and you'll be happy with yourself. But MSR Pocket Rocket Stove, it works great. Um, and then another fuel canister. So I got my cup, got my stove, got my fuel. It's pretty, pretty simple little setup. Shelter, making some changes. Got a Walmart dry bag, cause uh, a 12 by 12 tarp is a little unruly to have on a table, but I will pull it out right now. So, got this dry bag. This contains my whole shelter system, minus the trekking poles. Use the trekking poles to set up my tarp, so I don't have to find trees. I can set it up wherever I want. Got steaks, uh, I have eight steaks. These are like mini groundhog steaks, but they're not MSR groundhogs. So they're not insanely expensive, like a Chinese version. This is what I used last time. These came from the uh, nature hike tent. I uh, sacrificed the tent, kept the steaks. I have three guy lines. These came with the tarp. It is an REI trail break um, 12 by 12 tarp, and it came with six guy lines that are actually really nice. They have little um, toggles and tensioners. So I'm only gonna use three of them for the setup I intend to do. And then Drake gave me his old trekking pole coupler because he got a center pole for the Cimarron. So this holds my um, trekking pole together to use as a uh, center pole for the tarp. So sort of the accessories to the setup, if you will. And then I have this monstrosity. This is an REI 12 by 12 tarp. It is square, it has tie outs everywhere, and it is amazing. For size reference, but I'm going to be using that. Uh, I haven't decided on a setup. I have a couple of them in my pocket, uh, depending on the terrain and the weather. I have one that's sort of an enclosed pyramid that I like, but I'm worried about condensation. Uh, I can do an A-frame that is absolutely massive, but that also means a bear can just walk through my tent, uh, and I'm not a fan of that. So I'll figure that out once we get there. As a ground sheet, I didn't have time to order Tyvek but I did have one of these Adventure Medical Kits emergency blankets. These aren't Mylar, um, they're kind of soft, so I don't know how it sounds in the microphone, but it's not crinkly like Mylar, um, but it's five by eight, it's waterproof. I don't think the reflectivity would add any heat in my shelter, but I'm just using that as a ground sheet inside of the tarp, however I choose to set that up. But that's the shelter I'm rocking with this year, and we'll see how it goes. Sleep system, exact same. If you guys haven't bought a quilt from Hang Type Shop yet, Hang Tight Shop, yeah, I said that right. If you haven't bought one yet, what are you doing, man? These, they're phenomenal, they're incredible. I'm excited that I get to sleep in this quilt again. Um, Drake apparently wasn't the only victim of the hellfire from the morning of day six because I too am losing feathers out of uh, some unforeseen pinhole, but uh, quilt's in great shape, I love it, so soft. I'm just, I'm all giddy inside about getting to sleep in this thing. It'll be super warm. Uh, travel pillow, because I like to sleep. Actually, I like to lay in my tent awake and not sleep for some reason, but I like to be comfortable when I do it. So, got a travel pillow from Walmart, full size, not messing around, inflatable pillows suck. I'm gonna ask you right now, what degree is your, your quilt? 20. So I'm gonna be toasty because it's supposed to get down like what, 39, 38 yeah, average. That's the, that's so maybe average maybe we'll have some cool nights, but I have found for me personally, my body, the sleep system I use, 20 degrees is like where you get cold. A lot of sleeping bags that are 20 degree rated, comfort's like 35, 40, right? But this one, we had it like 24, 23. I've had it some cold temperatures um, and I've been comfy. I, I'd imagine like 19 degrees, I'd probably start to be like, Ugh, it's a little, a little chilly, but um, 20 degrees is a solid rating on that thing. Um, sleeping pad, I'm gonna change it in the future. I just didn't get around to changing it. I'm looking at the Pariah Outdoors um, insula, whichever one is comparable to the um, Thermarest. It's like $100, I think it has a 4R value. And it's a rectangle. I kind of want to try a rectangle pad. Um, I just, I didn't order it. It's This one's fine, it's the Climate Static V light insulated one 
Um, it's okay. It's not the most comfortable. I never got cold on it, even though there has been some speculation on if their R values are honest. Um, but it blows up fast. It inflates fast. Um, and it's it was fine. So I'm just going to use that again as my sleeping pad. Um, no holes in it. It's, it is pretty durable. So um, that's what I'm going with for the sleep system. That's about it. I just lay down on top of this tarp and roll myself up like a burrito. If it's if it's this big, you can't really mess it up, you know? Like, you're gonna live, even if you don't know how to pitch a tarp. Okay, tell us what you're doing. I'm about to step on a scale to get my weight, and then I'm gonna put a pack on and step back on the scale to get my pack's weight. Um, do you have to disclose my weight? Yes. 162.7. There you have it, folks. Now let's put on this pack. So I have my two fuel canisters in here, but I don't have any food or water. Uh, other than that, I have everything, including trekking poles, extra clothes, all that stuff. So this should be pretty accurate. One eighty-two point three. I'm no time for some math. No mathematician, but one eighty-two point three minus one sixty-two point eight, right? Yes. So it's nineteen point five. Possibly. We'll put it in like right here if we're wrong. Gotta be right. Yeah, nineteen and a half. That's close to what I had last time. It's really not that big of a change. It's not that big of a change because last time I had the the tent footprint and the fly and the poles which probably weighed about the same as the tarp. Uh, I think the tarp's two something pounds, so. Not bad, not bad, I'm not upset. Thanks for watching guys. I filmed this yesterday, but the audio quality was horrible because we were using two different mics and I was trying a different system that just didn't work out right. So, thanks for watching. I will be doing my pack dump shortly. Um, we'll also be doing our food. So, we're super excited. For this trip we leave in one day and uh, i hope you all enjoyed the video and kind of learned something from it i know this packing can kind of be intimidating but uh, we're excited to show you also head over to the big money outdoors website um, it has all of our lists all of our breakdowns um, it's really just a hub for everything big money outdoors all of our information it'll be in the link in the description like and subscribe please it really helps out the channel um, you'll be seeing some really cool content coming up we're literally about to head out for an elk hunt so i'm super excited and with this new camera and some of the new stuff we've got it's just going to be better and better as the years go on